We use words like a uh, friend of God, or we use words like experience God, and I don't think that we really know what we're talking about. We're talking about a being, a vast, uncontainable, undefinable, outside of time being that we so flippantly talk about called God. Before time began, he was this vast expanse. I mean, you can't get outside of him. You could go to the very edge of the edge of the edge, and still God is there. He, he is, is undefinable. He has. He, he just, just is. And this is eternal life, to know this being. And the knowledge of God leads to the love of God. And Jesus said it. He says, if you know me, and if you abide in me, you will love. love. And this is a generation that will have visions and visitations and will see things like no other generation has ever seen. But at the end of the day, did you learn to love? Did you learn to love? At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, and you are just a naked human soul before the throne of God, did you learn to love? Life is a vapor. For real. Life is a vapor. And you are not of this world. For real. It's not just a nice song. It's not just a nice thought. It's not an escapism just to kind of get out of, of responsibility. It's a reality. You are not of this world. You are going to die in about 50 years. For real. Maybe sooner. At best, life is a vapor. You are going to die sooner than you think. You are going to face the uncreated one in your barrenness, in your raw self. You are going to face the uncreated one. you do in this age with your heart's response in love is the only thing, the only thing, the only thing that matters in the truest sense of the word. It is the only thing that matters. Why are you here to choose love? You are made for the uncreated one. And the one thing that he wants from you is your voluntary love. Your voluntary love. He wants you to stand without offense. And he wants you to stand in the knowledge of him in voluntary love. And one of the number one ways that voluntary love is expressed is through pouring out your lives for your brothers and your sisters. It is a violent, a violent, a violent reaction when you go against the current of the age and you say, I will not live for myself. I will not live pursuing my own way. I will not build my own kingdom. I will not go my own way, but I will choose to go low in humility. I will serve my brother. I will serve my sister. I will lift them up and making them greater than I, knowing that in the age to come, I am storing up riches upon riches upon riches upon riches, which in just a moment I will see. It is a violent, a violent thing to stand in an age of lovelessness. It is a violent thing to stand in love before the uncreated one and say, I want to love you with all my heart, you who I cannot see. May my life scream transcendence. There is a God. There is a God. And He has a Son. And His affections are on me. And the expression of those affections in this darkened world is my life poured out. The reason why... The reason why the greatest expression of love in this age is servanthood is because He is a servant. You want the knowledge of God? Become as He is. Look at Him and then do what He does. You will be flooded with the knowledge of God. You want the kingdom of heaven. You want the power encounters that you're looking for, that I'm looking for. We want this realm of eternity. Become a servant of all. It is the surest and the only way to the knowledge of God because He is a servant. That is His very nature. He serves. He comes and He gets under the people. He comes just like He did the first time. He is a servant. Yes, He is a great King, but He is a great King who serves. If you want the knowledge of God and you want supernatural encounter, dreams and visions and healings and encounter, dive deep into the love of God and express it through loving your brother and you will be flooded with the knowledge of God. You will be flooded with the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God always leads to love. Always. It always leads to love because He is love. If you know Him, He goes, how can you say you love God but you hate your brother? He goes, you're a liar and there's no truth in you.
And do you know what it means to hate your brother? It doesn't mean only to be like, oh, I hate them. That's not the only thing that hate means. Hate means jealousy, contention, strife. Those kind of things are birthed in a hate for your brother. Those kind of things are what led, you know, Cain to kill Abel. It was the jealousy and the contention and the strife that created a hate in his heart. If you embrace hate, you become like the enemy. How many of you have read Matthew 5, 6, and 7, the Sermon on the Mount? Christianity 101. And he says, turn the other cheek. He says, love your neighbor. This is the way of the kingdom. Yes, we are going to do great exploits. Yes, we are a generation who will stand in a warring spirit. Yes, we are a generation who will lay hold of the things of God. But how will we do it? We will do it through the power of passion, through the power of love. It is violent. There's a great equalizer called eternity. And it doesn't matter. No matter what sphere you might have or what, what um, hand you've been dealt, so to speak, it doesn't matter what your circumstance is. If you're, you're par- you have a horrible home life and you have, you have all of these issues that you're trying to work through, nobody's mentoring you, nobody's going to bring you to the fullness of who you are, you have all of these things that you're facing and nobody's really there to help you, those things are not going to limit you from being great in eternity. And you're going to die in a minute anyway. You may not have a great sphere in this life. You might and you might not. It doesn't really matter. But if you don't, you can be eternally, eternally, eternally wealthy. You can be eternally great. There is an invitation that the Lord wants to give you in this hour to set your heart on a pilgrimage, not of this world. Set your heart on a pilgrimage to be great in eternity. You are going to be there in just a moment. You are going to be there in just a moment. And what you have done in love and service is what is going to stand in that day. Give yourself to the heart of God with a violence. Give yourself to the love of God and to loving your brother and your sister. And I promise you, in just a moment, when we step over that line and we stand in eternity, your wisdom will be justified. Your wisdom will be justified. It is the only thing that stands. It is the only thing that stands. It's what's done under the sun that is vain. When you do things as an end in themselves, they end. The only thing that remains is what I do before the uncreated one. That's it. And are we a people who are willing to give everything to the fastest lifestyle, to Christianity? There's no other way to be a Christian. It's Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Jesus himself said it. It's not an alternative way. It's not only reserved for a few. Now what it looks like may look different for different people, but it's not. It's not an option. If you want to live as a Christian in your generation and you want to make a difference and you want to make an impact, Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is the only way to do it. It's servanthood and it's love because He is love and humility is His nature. You want the knowledge of God? Then embrace His nature. Embrace who He is. He said, this is how that you know that I am in you and you are in me. This is how you know if you abide in me and I abide in you. If you abide in me, I abide in you. You will ask what you want and it will come to pass. But do you know how you know if you're in Him? If you do His command. And you know what His command is? Love. And I think that the Lord is saying to this generation, die to yourself. Die to yourself that He could live. Die to yourself and you are having a ministry. Your ministry is to lay down your life. Your ministry is to live not of this world. That you want to be an apostle? You want to be a prophet? You want to be a great man or woman of faith? Lay down your life. Lay down your life. Die to yourself daily. Pick up your cross and follow Him. Die to yourself through desire. Through desire. And you will find a romance that will be awakened in your heart. Because you were made to live with something to die for. You were made to live for somebody else. I mean, have you ever... It's like it's like romance. It's giving yourself to someone else. It's, it's living totally other than... There is a passion inside of the human soul. And I think it's even unique in this generation that we want something to live for, to fight for, something to die for. This is it. Lay down your life. Lay down your life. Lay down your life. And you will enter into such a divine romance. You will enter into the power of God like you have not known. But 
only when He can trust you. When He can trust you is when you're walking in true humility. When we are walking as He walked in this life, not of this world, my heart set on a pilgrimage, not clinging to things, not grasping for the wind, not of this world, walking steadfast, day by day by day, abiding in love, doing what He has commanded, living and an expression of His heart in this age. My ultimate destiny is to become one with the uncreated one. My ultimate destiny is to marry the Lamb. And I want to be equally yoked in that day. I want to be equally yoked in love. And to be equally yoked in love, I must be as He is, holy as He is, not of this world, not given to jealousies, to strife, and to contentions, and the things that weigh us down, not the lust of the age, not of this world. It's all fading away. Anyway, it's all fading away. It's just a grasping after the wind, all of it. The only thing that remains is the heart ablaze in the emotion and the knowledge of God. The heart ablaze in servanthood. The heart ablaze in love for the uncreated one. This will remain. This is wisdom. The days are short. The days are very, very, very short. Not only are you going to die in a minute, but it's the end of the age. The days are very, very, very short. And He wants friends in this hour. He wants friends of the bridegroom, for real. He wants apostles, and He wants prophets, and He wants people that He can entrust Himself to, who will not cling to the people, who will not take His sheep and may build their own kingdoms. He wants shepherds after His own heart, and His heart is a heart of a servant. His heart is the heart of a lover. You want to be a shepherd after His own heart? Do you want to stand in the councils of God and hear what is going on in the emotions in the, between Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit? Do you want to be a friend of the bridegroom? Do you want to be a radical forerunner at the end of the age? Love and love well and serve with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. Go low and He will lift you up and your wisdom will be justified. This is all that remains. This is all that remains. Every time you say yes, you are recoding your inner man and you are living from a different age. When you say, I choose love, I choose love. I will not take vengeance. I will not take revenge. I will not be jealous. I will not live according to my flesh. I choose love. You are working that muscle and you'll be strong in that day and you'll be strong in this day. And that's the only thing that remains. Fill us with the knowledge of you, O oh God. Fill us with the knowledge of you. Teach us the simple way. Show us how to serve our brothers and sisters. Teach us the way of greatness. Lord, I ask that you would do what only you would do, and you would let a clear sound of the frailty of life and what is coming in eternity. Would you write it on our hearts, O oh God? Write eternity upon our hearts. Write eternity upon our hearts. That we would live for the age to come. That we would not be of this world. That we would not be weighted down by jealousies, by contentions, by striving, by the lust of the age. Oh God, I ask that you would invade, that you would invade this generation with the knowledge of you.